So hi, everybody, and welcome to Nail That UX Job, our first webinar at Wiseline Academy. So my name is Cristina Vasquez. I'm a UX designer here at Wiseline, and I'm mainly focused on uh, customer-facing uh, projects. I've worked for a diverse set of industries, from uh, entertainment all the way to security online. You can check out a bit about my work over here in Medium and Dribble and in LinkedIn. Great. Hi, I'm Chisa Tanaka. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator. Here in Wasteline, I work as a visual designer focusing on branding projects. You can check on some of my illustration work in um, Instagram, um, design work on Behance, and some of my professional profile in LinkedIn. So the goal with this webinar is that we help you guys gain insights on how to build your own brand help you stand out from others and showcase your great, amazing experience so you can nail that fantastic UX job that you've been aiming for. So how do you get certified? So you have to show to all of the sessions, fill the feedback form that we'll be sharing shortly on our Slack channel and also at the end of the webinar and work and showcase your portfolio. So we have a very easy code of conduct, be friendly and patient be welcoming. We strive to be a community that welcomes and supports people from all backgrounds and identities. Also, remember to be respectful. We might think different, but disagreement is no excuse for poor behavior and poor manners. Be careful in the words that you choose and always be honest and genuine with who you are and what you stand for. So that being said, we have prepared a four-day program, which is, which is this really in four weeks, starting from today. So it will be every Thursday of every four weeks. So today we're going to start with personal branding, and we hope it will be helpful, helpful for you. Yeah. So let's get this going with personal branding. And FYI, we are at Wiseline offices here in Guadalajara. And if you get to see a couple of maids in their sportswear, it's because one of the perks we have here is our gym, and we're <laughs> right across it. So don't mind them. We like to be fit. Yes. <laughs> so in the agenda that we have for today, we'll be talking a bit about what this brand means, uh, purpose and motivators, why are they important, your audience and identifying them, telling your story and sharing who you are. You can join the Slack channel that uh, we, I believe we, you are already have uh, added to. So you can make all the questions you have while we are talking. We are going to make small pauses and, at the end of each section and at the end of the class. So. Yeah, so we're really looking forward to what you have to say and to answer all of your questions. So don't be shy and be active on the Slack channel. Yes. So let's start with about brand. Yes. So what is brand? So the brand starts with a collection of perceptions in the mind of somebody. They are born out of experience and they reflect reputation. So what do you mean with reputation? So this is very interesting because reputation is how others perceive you, what others believe that it's true about yourself, and it's very different from your actual character, which is what you are and what you identify with. So how can you actually recognize this reputation if it has to do with what others have to say? So first, you do a big job of introspection, very deep level of self-assessment. And secondly, you ask around, ask for feedback. But for, for who? So you go to your managers, your colleagues, your friends, and your mentors, and you can just uh, get a one-on-one -on -one or even send surveys. I just recommend like 10 question tops. Mm -hmm. So, um, but what if I'm not in a work environment and I don't have managers, colleagues, and mentors to ask for? Okay, so this there's this magical fairy that could be anybody. It's the partner in growth, and it lives between introspection and feedback. This could be a friend of yours or someone in your family. So after you've done the introspection work, you realize that there are things about yourself that you want to improve. For example, I could be a, a chronic apologizer. So I would go to you, Chisa, as a friend and ask you that. So I've identified that I continuously apologize for things that are not my fault. <laughs> Can you help me out with that? I don't, I don't even do it consciously. So could you please lend me a hand on that? I'll totally do it. And that gives me awareness of the things that I'm constantly doing that I need to improve. 
So maybe some of you must be thinking about, yes, but what if I'm those kind of shy people and who is not comfortable about talking about yourself in front of others? So, yes. Um, so uh, there's just a certain amount of things that you can do to advocate for yourself. One of them would be becoming great at what you do, like working really hard and becoming an expert. Yes. Treating people well, because I think that mainly what people have asked uh, or will ask about you when uh, trying to hire you or getting into a project with you is how well are you at what you do? And are you a team player? How well yeah. do you treat others? And also like how genuine you are and how consistent and reliable you are on a daily basis. Exactly. Now, that being said, those are the things that you can do to influence your reputation. What happens when you're not in the room? Well, for those cases, we have the sponsors. Yeah. So sponsors are people who are willing to do um, branding when you are not around. So who could be those kind of people? So Chris and I have prepared some scenarios that we are trying to act very naturally. <laughs> we are doing our best. And the first scenario is this. Imagine um, two persons talking each other and one of them could be your future client and it's like, hey, Christina, you won't believe what happened to me. My designated, designated designer just quit it and I have tons of work to be done. Do you know somebody who could help me? You know, I've worked with this designer that always does an amazing job and always delivers on time. Let me pass, him, pass you his contact. Yes, great. So you want that to happen to your life. <laughs> So in this case, it will be your clients, your current clients. And in this scenario, it will be let your work talk about yourself. So do you remember what Christy said before about do your job well? That is the best advertisement you can do for yourself at the first stage. So when, uh, when, you do, uh, when you deliver a great experience to your client, this person naturally will become your sponsor. So moving on to the next scenario. And imagine this at the game, these two people talking out, talking to each other. And there, um, one is like, hey, Christina, do you remember uh, my upcoming business? Mm -hmm. um, it comes up that I need a web application. And I just have no idea how could I start or who can help me to be this done, to get this done. Do you know who can I approach to? Yeah, you know, I have a really talented friend that's very easy to work with and never lets you down. Yes, so that's another scenario. In this case, it will be your friends and the values will be the thing that will work uh, for sponsoring yourself. So a lot of times, it's not just about the content of your work, but uh, about your personality. So people might choose you if they feel comfortable working with you. And you must be thinking about what if I don't have friends who have those kind of connections or yeah. opportunity, well, don't worry. It can be your the friends of your friends. You will be really amazed of how people like to share information. So the last scenario is a really common one. Uh, this is a big social gathering and people are making feeling conversations. And there is always a guy who has their cell, mm -hmm. the, his cell phone in the hand and starts with this. Have you seen this designer? He always does amazing things and I always follow him for inspiration and yeah you know you should definitely share a post because I'm following that designer yes check it out and you once in a while start following people in these cases yeah. so yes don't underestimate the media and we're going to talk this about this uh, later a little bit deeper but it's not just about sharing your work but how you tell what you do so, yes, let your story get to them. So, uh, before we run into questions, sponsorship is very important. And if you haven't realized who are those important people that are talking about yourself, start asking around and start spreading the word, uh, the word about what you actually do for a living. Yes. Because networking, it's a very powerful tool, and it could help you improve your everything. And you never know when is your future client around. Exactly. So uh, we'll take a few minutes to read all your questions and we'll gladly answer them. Yes. Okay. 
So we can move on to the next section. Fantastic. So let's talk about finding your purpose and motivator. So now you know about branding and who could do branding for you, but the most important thing, thing before that is what you stand for. So we have prepared some exercises for introspective exercises to find uh, what you stand for. And the first one will be your personality. So what kind of person you are, it's really important to uh, be aware of what kind of person you are to look for a job or to start sharing yourself. For example, maybe you're just kind of person who is an individualist, who feel comfortable being alone and it's not great as communication. Mm -hmm. So if you are those kind of people and are starting to look for a job in a big company, maybe you want to practice your social skills, your communication skills, or maybe you can look for a freelance work. Or maybe you're just those kind of people who are always doing something for other people. So maybe you want to uh, be part of a really big team. Or maybe you're, you, you're just those kind of people who realizes and always is taking the lead, like in family trips and social events. So maybe you want to look for a management work. So let you, in yourself do this really introspective work. Yeah. And like, don't forget to ask around. Yes. And validate, validate. That what you perceive and are communicating about yourself. It's actually being interpreted that the way that you want it. Yes. And maybe because maybe I think I'm really social uh, and a leader person and maybe I'm not. Yeah. So, yes. Do you remember, remember those people who that Christy said before, your mentor, your colleagues, your managers, your friend, your family, those people are exactly who you can approach to for this kind of validation. Yeah. And you know what sometimes I found helpful is doing this test like 16 personalities that allows you to identify like how would you behave under certain scenario? Because I don't I don't think that we're static people, but mm -hmm. that we respond into certain things or aspects of your life exactly. so this will allow you to see that like, i'm 80 percent extrovert and 20 percent introvert and that depends on who am i talking to and when yes so move on to the next one it's you know, about your values so it will be what kind of professional you are which is different from what kind of person you are for example Maybe you're just kind of reliable kind of designer who always pushes your, yourself to deliver on time. Or maybe you're those kind of efficient kind of designer who always finds out the way to do things faster and better. Or maybe you're just kind of those cool guys who always look chill and that is because you have everything under control. So you'll be an uh, organized kind of designer. So it is important to be aware of what is your strength as a designer because that is what you are going to explore mm -hmm. and use it for you to showcase yourself and always as we said before validate so to validation you can go as we said for feedback or even uh, do these kind of questions like what kinds of situation i find myself often or what kind of um behavior i take in specific kind of scenarios so let be true to yourself uh about this it so it, it is a really introspective exercise. Yeah. So now that we talked about what this brand means, uh, your personality, your values, let's go to the what, how, and why. Yes, yeah, so we are gonna dig a little bit deeper. So the what is the most immediate um, question about yourself. So it's about what you do. I have prepared this an example, which is not specifically my case, but, I do, it could be like, I do motion graphic animation. So what do you do, Christina? I do user experience for digital products. Concise, okay, move on to the next. It is how, how do you do what do you do? So for the former example could be, I do motion graphic animation using animation softwares like After Effects and combining it with traditional animation knowledge. So how do you do UX design? I do tons of research, humanize complex data, and start making visual proposals of how a user flow might be used for a digital product. That sounds complex. <laughs> <laughs> and we can move on to the next one, which is the most important part, the why. So the why is about 
the that deepest part of your heart that moves you and keeps you waking up every day and going to work or makes you engage to your profession and keep uh, learning and studying and looking for new levels. So for ex for the former example could be I do motion graphic uh, animation because I like to um, give life to, to the static graphics to communicate complex concepts to the world. So what is so your case? For me, UX was uh, kind of like a life changer. I wanted to feel like I have a bigger purpose in life. So that meant building things that will make people's lives easier. Beautiful. Yeah. So now uh, you know what to do, how you do it, and why you do it. And you know, what is really important is that we usually communicate to the inside out. And this way, you tell a more compelling story and you show what you're passionate about, what you actually stand for and what you believe in. So be honest about why you do what you do. Yes. So you can share us on the Slack channel what you do. What do you do, guys? <laughs> yeah. And also, you, if you have a question, this is the moment for it. Yes. So we're going to take some seconds if you have any questions about what we have talked. If you haven't, we can, you, you still can do it at the end of the session. Yeah. And, you know, take this time to maybe start building something that we can review and help you out with some feedback. But we will gladly do that. Exactly. So moving forward, let's talk about your audience. So what do you mean with audience? So audience could be anybody who is on the receiving end of your communication, of the message that you're sending out there. Because we're always communicating. So that could be you, Chisa, or you guys that are hopefully watching us and paying attention. <laughs> In this case, it will be you. <laughs> yeah, so um, my first uh, suggestion would be to always do your research. The more you know, the most likely you are to make a great impression. Mm -hmm. And good impressions like could last forever and could nail you that UX job. So first of all, start with, where do I actually want to work on? What's the type of the company? Do they do product like Airbnb or Ambition? Are they focused on service? Do they do consulting like Asset Lifeline? What's the size of the organization like? Is it a small startup that's just barely starting? Is it an agency like one of that are very design focused or is it a multinational? You know, uh, there are pros and cons to each of those. Like uh, even like what's the structure? Maybe you're more into a hierarchical way that can make you feel more secure. And even what's this, the methodology? Like, do they do lean? Do they do agile? What does those mean? Or are they following the design screen as a rule of thumb? Those are like some ideas of questions that you can start asking around and focusing in to start looking for that perfect company that would be just right for you. And now that you've done that bit of research, mm -hmm. who's actually your target market? Like what are the groups that you want to interact with most frequently? What are the levels in relation to you? What's the role? And the most important part is What are you looking to obtain out of that conversation? What's your desired outcome out of that? And start focusing on what they're interested in. Probably the conversation that you would have with these different people, like from a manager to a recruiter, could be very different. So start focusing yes. on who is this individual that's listening to my story? Because maybe they won't have the language or maybe their interests are very different. And that gives me to my next point which is a pro tip, like creating a proto persona, like start analyzing this persons that you are aiming for, like what are their interests, needs and goals, behaviors and pain points. So I created an example for this one. Whoa. So <laughs> <laughs> this is just a very high level UX way to do your portfolio. This is for a senior recruiter. What she wants to know mainly is if you're a cultural fit. She may be invested in what your process is like, but she doesn't have all the reference and all the knowledge to be certain or not. So you, she wants to hear about your values, your personality. And she has so little time to review it that you need to be very conscious that you need to make an overly lasting impression on a brief and concrete uh, sentence or less. 
And like this uh, type of exercise could also, could also help you out analyzing behavior. Like if she's a senior recruiter, she's probably mm -hmm. using LinkedIn. So that's the way you want to contact her. Or maybe she's going to an event. So um, that takes us to the next thing. So yes, that's another level of preparation. And I <laughs> think Andrea will be pleased with that. Yeah, because you're starting taking into consideration the person that you're talking to. And this takes me to tone of voice, which is how you pitch the character of your personal brand through your own words in either written or, sp or spoken. Mm -hmm. And it's not about what you say, but mainly about like how you say it. And it has to make an impression. So I found this in Norman Nielsen Group. It's meant to do for the design of websites, but I think it's very valid to start asking like this four dimensions shows us that we can be like either funny or all the way serious or neutral, but you have to identify who you're talking to. What's the type of the company? What am I looking to achieve on that conversation or that email or that uh, call, you know? Yeah. Be very consistent of who's on the other side of the line. So some of you must be thinking, come on, who wants to be irreverent in a, for example, interview? Well, you never know. Like, uh, for example, if you want to take a really creative and casual kind of job position and your interview is here in Mexico, uh, one thing you must know about us Mexicans is that we love humor. So you, want, you might want to add a little bit of the humor to make a really high impression of you or Again, if you if that is not a uh, part of your personality, yes, as we said before, be genuine and you don't have to do it. Yeah. But if it's part of it and you can add it to add value to your interview, do it. Yeah, don't push things that feel uncomfortable. Be very genuine who, with who you actually are and your personality, but aim for growth. So if public speaking is something that you're looking for, like maybe there are some dimensions of tone that you should consider. Yes, exactly. So now moving forward, we're almost getting to phase number four. And, and we have a question from yes. Veronica. Uh, hi, Veronica, and thank you for making the first question. Yeah. So the first question is, if I already have the how, why, and what, how do I share that in my LinkedIn profile, talking with people, or what can be a good suggestion? Well, that's a great question. And that kind of takes us to our... <laughs> next step yes but I think that identifying this part of yourself helps you start building a story yes. so this could be either how you pitch yourself on an interview on a meetup or even how you start writing your cv or your resume yes so have identified that, those kind of things like for example um you will find yourself in a case when people ask you what you do, like what you do, Veronica. And if you have this work out and figure it out inside of you, it will be really easier and faster and more compelling and engaging yeah. to explain about yourself as a professional. And it will make a high impact and maybe it could be really a memorable thing. Yeah. So people might... Um, remember you for a long time it starts a more honest conversation exactly and you stop perceiving your job as something that pays a blow but something mm -hmm. i'm very passionate about that i get to do every day exactly and it will help you to identify uh as as well as what what do you really like and it will help you to focus on what you really like to read or what you really like to add as a hobbies to increase your strengths so yes um thank you veronica we hope the answer we have we could answer your question if and not just let us know we, yes, would, we will gladly be. express more of it yes so we can move on to the next one cool so it's about telling your story the elevator pitch so here we're gonna start building an elevator pitch the story with this is kind of in its name. It's about telling your story in a very high impact short sentence. Because imagine that you just jump into an elevator and there is this director or high manager of UX of that team that you're really aiming to get in. An opportunity. There's an opportunity. So you have like 20 seconds or less 
to cause an everlasting impression. So you need to be very wise with your words. So yes, we have prepared some steps or exercises that we invite you to um, do it. In you can write it down in the Slack channel. Yeah, like if you write it down on the Slack channel, we would gladly give you some feedback. So yes, don't be shy, guys. So let's start with step one. Begin with an action phrase that it's not a noun. So uh, for my case, uh, you don't want to start with something really vague like, um, hi, I'm Chisa, I'm a feminist designer, because it doesn't say much about you. And at this level, the your audience, your audience mm -hmm. is not that engaged with you or interested in you to make questions. So you might be uh, really point and go to the focus. Like in my case, I could say, hi, I'm Chisa Tanaka, I'm a... I'm a visual designer in a startup called Wiseline. And as a spare time, I work as a freelance graphic designer and illustrator. Fantastic. What so, would be your case? Uh, for my example, I'm a UX designer in a global startup called Wiseline. Great. That is <laughs> concise. So the next step is adding a one sentence statement about what you actually do. So remember the what, this is the moment to use it. So in my case, it could be um, in Wiseline, I focus on enhancing the branding of the company. And as a freelance designer, I apply illustration to products like advertisement, books, and packaging. So I'd like, to, I'd like to keep it more personal. So for me, it would be, I make people's lives easier by doing research and planning. That is beautiful. <laughs> so the next step is, Give it a statement uh -huh. of the specific impact that you're giving. So you want to explain in a really short way why you are remarkable. For example, in my case could be due to my visual translation skills, I have my work team have uh, now are able to communicate better the company's branding to the world. That's great. Mm -hmm. So in my case would be by doing research and analysis, I make sure that we build amazing products that align with business perspectives. We know it, you can do it way better than us. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So now for the final step, which is my favorite part is, and with a call to action. Now be very conscious on who you're telling this. Your audience again. Yeah, like... Uh, for my example, maybe I'm talking to a new client and I really want to make an impression that I'm really handling things right and that will, I will make a fantastic job for you. So I would, after I introduce myself, I say what I do, I say why I do it, I go for it and end with a call to action, which could probably be I'm looking forward to working with your team, start interviewing your users so we can build the perfect user experience for your product yeah or maybe uh, if in my case i'm looking for an internship or something is i can say something like hey i'm um i'm interested in work uh, in be part of your team because i think i can grow as a professional and also add value to the company and you can add something um more complex about what makes you remarkable again we know you can do it better. Definitely. But in these scenarios, you always want to be uh, prepared. Um, it could be a business card or because you can throw the call to action, but if you don't give them your contact, how they will find you in this world. So this could be, again, something really analog, like a business card or in this digital era, yeah. the social media is a strength and also your email address. And you want to be something easier to remember so if it's your social media account, you want to your profile, your username to be something really easy to find out uh, instead of just acronyms. And, yeah. And be careful to don't hand off your high school mail address. <laughs> yeah, that, that could be kind of weird. Yes. So guys, remember to keep it short and sweet. And this could be like for when you meet somebody or this could be your... LinkedIn description or networking social gathering. Yeah. So there's a high value on using this elevator pitch as your selling point. Yes. 
Um, so this is the moment of question, and we have one from Victor. And thank you, Victor, for making question. And I have a question. I am recently promoted to a UX designer role in EV IBM. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> that That's is great. great news. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Jinx>. <laughs> yeah. And I don't have a lot of experience. I like the UX research aspect to the role, but I want to improve my UI skill, design skills. What do you recommend me to read or tutorials to improve UI skills? Wow. Um, hmm. I would suggest that you follow a ton of tutorials. I think that UI, it's very important to keep up with inspiration. And also UI is kind of a complex um, area of design. So you could be, uh, first you can be aware of what specifically part of UI you want to start learning about or what is missing or what do you need the, in the first scenario. Like um, currently I'm, I'm studying in a platform that is called Interaction Design Foundation mm -hmm. and it has a really great um, course about UI patterns. And you could do that too. Or if you already know about patterns and you know more, you want to learn uh, more about technical skills in Sketch, you can always go to Skillshare or there's tons of tutorials. It could be, you, should, you don't have to pay. Yeah. Exactly. You can find great tutorials in YouTube. Or you never be shy to ask to your colleagues. They are the greatest mentor you can get. So if you have uh, great colleagues, and uh, don't be shy uh, to keep, take uh, as an opportunity to ask questions. And also you can start attending to those kind of networking events where the um, tons of kind of experts are there. So you can look for an expert and ask for mentorship too. Yeah, and I think that the design community and the tech area are oversharing so yeah you can always check around what others are doing in dribble and medium like they're constantly sharing like how they are fixing these everyday problems in the ui yes but mainly be focused on what do you want to learn first yeah so you don't over become overwhelmed for tons of people information yeah so ui could be uh, have a very wide range exactly so be objective and focused we hope that answered your question. Yeah, if you have more follow-up questions, we'll gladly answer them. Okay, uh, so if there's no more questions. Uh, oh, we have another question from Gus. Yay. Thank you, Gustavo. <laughs> is it Gustavo? Well, Gus. <laughs> Thank you, Gus. <laughs> so the question is, as an industrial designer with experience in UI and UX projects, how do I showcase those abilities in the portfolio or the recruiter? Well, that's a question that we hope uh, our colleagues could answer you in the former, in the upcoming classes. Yeah. So stay tuned. <laughs> for the next webinar session. Yes, for the next webinar like, session. For now, what I can tell you is that you start understanding the person that you're talking to. Sometimes that when we talk, we're mainly thinking about ourselves, but start changing the, the chip and understanding what are the needs of the person that I'm talking to so that you can start structuring your dialogue to something that could be uh, easier for them to understand. Like for this recruiter, I'm, depending on the company, I'm pretty sure that she's mainly focused on your values and your personality and how great of a match you would be for the company. What is the value that you will eventually add mm -hmm. to the company? Yes. So I know we haven't answered your question fully, but as we said, those are topics for the next session. So don't miss it. And uh, we have another question from Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. What if I'm looking for a change in my career? For example, I'm a senior designer looking to jump to a leader or manager job. What, I, what I've done doesn't reflect what I want to do. How do I rebrand? Okay, that's How a do I rebrand. Oh, okay. So yes, if you're looking for a leadership or manage, management job, uh, you must consider what kind of skills are those positions um, asking for. For example, uh, for leadership, it's not about more um, technical skills, and it's more about um, social skills, 
uh, project management skills, um, time management skills, and it's more, as the role said, managing. So uh, you, you might start making questions of yourself about situations that you have former, like in other projects, what kind of role you have delivered, and how do you solve some um, challenges? So identify the challenges you have in your former projects and try to uh, explain it in a really concise um, way so mm -hmm. that people must understand uh, how you um, solve it in a, lo a, lo a lot of kind of levels, not just technically, but yeah. it can be socially. Uh, like if there was a um, mm, complicated situation between colleagues, how you solve it, that is a great point. If there was a um, organization st structure problem and you solve it with your organization skill, that will count it too. So you will be surprised how tiny things are what really matters for those kind of job positions. Yeah, and you know, become the owner of your narrative. Start being outspoken on these things that you're doing that could gain you that leadership role that you're looking for. So probably there are things that you're daily doing that people are not paying attention into, but you know you're doing them. So be very loud about them. And if you think you are, you don't have those kind of scenarios, well, yeah. now you can focus on it yeah. and start doing it and start uh, gaining visibility on your team and having these leader kind of actions in every project and every opportunity you, you could Again, it's not about just waiting for an opportunity. Sometimes the opportunity is what you make it. Yeah, generating so, opportunities, it's also part of the job. We have another two questions. Wow, thank you guys. Yes. Uh, it's from Alfonso. So is it basically applying some UX principles concept to you as if you were the product? Kind of, yes. Kind of. It's about building your experience, actually. How do you present yourself out there? How is working with you? Uh, how do others believe about you and start saying about you? So, yes. Yes, pretty much it. <laughs> but it doesn't sound great when you say selling myself as a product. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, at the end of the day, uh, you as a professional, you are a brand. So, yes. Instead of uh, like exposing yourself as a product, more like sharing the experience of working with you. Exactly. So we have, we hope we, we could answer your question. Mm -hmm. And the last one is from Diego. How it's your everyday routine at work? Well, um, thank you for asking. <laughs> um, everyday routine. Well, I always start up with a cup of of coffee. I literally is what the first thing I do before I leave in my backpack even. I just go grab a coffee and uh, for example in my personal case the first thing I do is to well settle up. I have a routine about connecting everything and after that I have a moment where I get to check all my emails and all my pending uh, tasks that I left from tomorrow, uh, yesterday, yeah, and then I move on to some, you know, you can move on to some chilling moment from taking breakfast or reading some blogs, mm -hmm. and then I get into, um, I do a daily list of my tasks in order, in priority order, like uh, what kind of things are really urgent to deliver today and at what time, so it is important for you to be aware of what kind of designer you are yeah. also and be aware of your speed uh, of working. So I'm really aware of, so I'm like, yeah, I have to do this and I oh, it will take me like uh, two hours. So it will be this hour to this hour and then I'm going to do this. And it feels so great to just crossing the list. Mm -hmm. So that's just my personal case. Um, if it suits you, please follow it. <laughs> and if yeah. not, let us hear about your process. Yeah, I think that lists are fantastic. Like as she said, I, I always start with coffee. And I usually 
just set up all my work, start reading all my emails, check my camera to see what's up for the day. Like maybe I have some UX checkpoint with my customers mm -hmm. or I usually have daily standups with my team so that we can all be in tune with what everybody's doing. I would go to Jira to check out my tickets and how I'm, what's the progress of them. And yeah, I think that'd be it. I, I do love, love checklists. So I usually have yes. them on keep. And I and just love that feeling of just checking that out. It makes you feel realized. Yeah. So, yes, th thank you for asking and let us know your process. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to the next section, sharing what you do. So this is the last part. Yeah. So, yes, um, it, you must be asking about yourself, where should I start sharing myself as a, well, we don't want to say product but as a designer. <laughs> and the answer is again, who is your target? Again, with your audience. So in this digital era, there's a lot of tools in the world. For example, you can go for a personal website or you can go for a YouTube page with your, tutor your personal tutorials or you can have your Facebook fan page or you can explore your writing skills in Medium. So imagine your professional life is kind of a video game and you're about to start it. So when you are about to start it, you want to choose your weapons. So yes, for and those weapons depend on of the game you're about to start. For example, uh, it will be the context. Mm -hmm. uh, your game will be under the sea, in the sky, and this translated to the real world. It will be like, it will be a creative, creative enterprise. Yeah. It will be a startup or uh, it will be tech related. So, and the other part is, Who, is your, who will be your contributors, which will be your audience. Mm -hmm. So you want to be, uh, again, really aware of those to choose where are you going to start sharing your work. So, and be very conscious on why you're doing this. Like, do I want to get my job out there? Am I trying to pull the attention of a recruiter? Am I trying to build community? Or do I want to share the knowledge that I have on this specific area? Because that would be like the dependency that you have on the tool you use. So we have prepared a great example of this. Um, we took the job to analyzing yes. a great designer so that we can show you all the steps that he's doing and why we think he is a great exhibit of personal branding. Uh, you can see this super cool guy with the mustache mm -hmm. and the electric blue suit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this is Tobias Van Schneider. He's a multidisciplinary designer and he's just very hip and loud about what he does, does in the web. So um, here's a piece of his personal website. And we specific, specifically choose this part when there is a profile and you can see how he using the tone of voice. And it's wrote, wrote it down. So it doesn't have to be uh, just spoken. You can see how he con makes this contrast between this really formal photograph in black and white in grayscale. And he added this humor, like he just doesn't like the world entrepreneur mm -hmm. talking about his certain third person. Yeah. So that adds a, a statement about what kind of person you are. So that makes um, you as a memorable or people get the, like the image of what kind of person you are and if you are uh, those kind of designer who you you might feel comfortable working with. Yeah. So we have prepared some of example of social media and portfolio sites that he uses. For example, this is his Twitter account. Now here, obviously he shares some of his work mm -hmm. and some of his blogs. and But also what he uses here is to share about um, other texts related to his expertise area. Mm -hmm. So he's proving that he is, he knows about it and he is uh, updated. Yeah. And also he does a little bit about sponsorship that we talked in the first part of, the, mm -hmm. of our talk and sharing the work of other designers and other creatives. So yes, it, um, your colleagues could be your sponsors too. True. So the next one is Medium. Here you can see how he explored his writing skills and tried to make these compelling stories about uh, his expertise areas. And again, he is proving that he knows what he does and how he 
do it. And, you know, Miriam is a specific kind of audience and he nails it really good. Yeah. I think he does a fantastic job in Medium, like by sharing things that he's discovered that wants to share with that community. So maybe if you've done a ton of research or tried to do things differently or are trying out this uh, new type of process, Medium could be the perfect fit for you. So that you can start sharing different ways and different approaches to the community. And like this even shows a bit of how an expert you are on your portfolio. Exactly. And moving on to the next one is Behance. So in Behance, uh, it allows you to upload projects in a really rich way and mm -hmm. visual way. So he used, you can see how he uses to uh, upload projects and he explains again what he does and how he does, it, how he does it and why, well, not about how, but why he does that. Yeah. So if you are willing to spend this time to um, expose your projects in a really visual and easy to digest uh, way, yeah. Behance could be your tool. Yeah, I think Behance is a perfect tool for sharing case studies mm -hmm. because you could be as extensive as you want to in a very visual and appealing way. Yes, and the next one is Dribble. So Dribble is uh, really similar to Behance, but instead of Behance with a really long process to showcase your process, it's more about one shot uh, kind of hunting. So you, you can see how here how he is really consistent of what kind of work he does. It's really clean and mm -hmm. clear. And also and he makes sure that even when it's on these kind of tiny images, he makes an impact and, and people might click on it and check on of his work. Yeah, and the thing with Dribble is that it can be like the hook into a deeper process or into something else that you're sharing. And I, I think that I find it very valuable because it allows you to show shots of your daily work. So you could post like every day and keep everybody aware that you keep doing things that add value or that you're still doing things that are interesting or even show off your UI visual and interaction skills, great. And finally, uh, Instagram. Here you can see how Tobias uses more in a personal way, um, uploading images of his everyday life. And you can see he has a wonderful life. But yeah. even in his personal Instagram account, you can see consistency in his aesthetics and how he, um, he sees the world in color palettes, uh, composition. And here he's proving his taste and his knowledge of composition and uh, making a statement with a single image and it doesn't have to say a lot. You can see how he uh, plays uh, really focus on tiny details and that says a lot of you as a designer. So we don't say that you must copy him, but how you uh, place, how you uh, capture your the real world talks about a lot of you as a creative being. Yeah. And I think that we not only communicate in a verbal or written way, but also in a visual area. So I think that Tobias does a wonderful job explaining his story in a visual perspective. Like what are his interests? What are his values? What does he actually stand for? So which are your tools or okay. your weapons for your game? Let us know. Uh, to wrap it up, we have these three statement. advices, statement, more than advices. Be very genuine with who you actually are and who you want to become, because there's always room for improvement and growth. Exactly. And be consistent, as you see with Tobias. Uh, you can be uh, really consistent, even when you're showcasing different kinds of projects. And this doesn't just translate in your portfolio, but in your work Um way for example if you are uh if you think your strength is uh to be reliable kind of designer you want to be reliable in all your projects no matter how big or small they are so that will become your brand as a designer and finally be constant you don't want to be that guy that posts one in a, every while so you post one a year and everybody will forget about you <laughs> yes it's sad 
but <laughs> it's true. And well, as we said before, it, you don't have to upload your Behance portfolio once a month. It yeah. could be uh, posting one image on Dribbble, Instagram, posting a Medium blog, you know, you choose it, but you want to be constant and telling to the world, hey, I'm still here and I'm still wor working as a designer. And I'm still relevant. Yes. So thank you. That's all for us. Uh, we have some questions. Yay. Thank you. That's so exciting. <laughs> so yes, we have a question from Carlos. Hi, Carlos. <laughs> it, it, is it important to use a specific title such as UX research, visual designer, digital product designer, or is better to use a more generic title like UX or product designer? I think it depends on what you're aiming for. Yes. I think that maybe for your LinkedIn profile, it could be very useful to have uh, this type of titles if that's what you're looking for. Because uh, usually recruiters will just type down the, the role and check out the profiles that are linked to that. Exactly. So be conscious on how you re refer to yourself and who's listening. And also it's um, about what kind of job you are looking for. Yeah. For example, if you are going to be uh, really specific or if you're a research expert, yes, you can put like UX researcher. Yeah, so totally. it will depend on what kind of uh, work you are looking for and you want to be, it, it's a mutual hunting, you know, about this. Yeah. Uh, recruiters are hunting you, well, hunting is not a pretty, pretty word, but it's looking for you and you also are looking for the perfect job. So be as specific as you want. Um, if you are, um, aware of you have really clearly what kind of job you want to, to have. Yeah. And if you are really an expert, showcase that. Don't be afraid of using a fancy name just because you think you won't be appealing. Because if you truly are an expert on that, you should be very outspoken on it. Exactly. So we hope you, we could answer your question. We have another from Diego. Thank you, Diego. Do you have an example of a non to visual portfolio like UX research? Well, that sure. question goes with Yeah, you. you know, you could use Medium as I stated before, like my colleague Arturo does a wonderful job. Like he's very into experimentation with how he does the approach to UX. And he's wrote a couple of wonderful blog posts about whiteboarding and so on. And he shares his outcomes and why he thinks that's of value. So as a UX researcher, Medium could be your place. Or if you're doing uh, a, the entire product, you could work on your website and be very specific on like the diagrams or the flows mm -hmm. that you're working on. What are the benefits that you added, like the value and everything. So exactly. And I, I get it. Like mm -hmm. Behance and Dribble can be very flashy if yes. you have a uh, UI or visual hidden talent. Mm -hmm. But for more structured roles like us, I think that Medium and having your personal website just nail it. And Arturo will be sharing us, uh, sharing you some uh, talks on the following week. So you want to be tuned so you can yeah. keep asking him from details for his process to showcasing his work in a non-visual way. So next question, uh, we hope it will help you. <laughs> and next question is from Victor. Tell us about your first UX job interviews. We want to hear your stories. Okay. Uh, oh. uh, so when I got out of college, I was very certain that I wanted to work on UX. But I had been working for branding and editorial, like for like my entire career at that point. So it was very difficult starting like this conversation and pitching me as something else than a branding designer and that had a very brief experience in UX. So my first interview was with a UX manager at that time. And I had, I had previous work, so I pitched like, what's the process that I'm working on and this is how I deliver things and he was very conscious of my inexperience so what he offered me was the opportunity of uh, working aside as 
part of marketing and then as a part of the UX team so that they could train me into the process that they were using in that company. That's great. Um, in my case, I'm not a UX designer, but for example, here, when I get my interview here in Weinstein, I did my research. I, I researched about my interviewer, viewers, which it was the lead of visual designers and some senior visual designers. And I look up for what kind of work they have done so I can think, um, find out about their taste, their aesthetics and their, and when you look for some, their portfolio, you can find out what, how, what kind of process do, does they take and what are they looking for, for you to do? So I use it on my uh, favor for my challenge, for example, and also um, it, for my tone of voice. So that helped a lot. Um, what else? Um, yes, the tone of voice, research, and and I think that what has helped me out in like the interviews that I've had is being very assertive and just being very secure about who I am and what I'm looking for. Like for all my interviews, I always go in and start pitching what I'm looking for. Like oh, yeah. Probably for that first job, I didn't have what it take, but I was very explicit who, who was later my boss that I wanted to be a UX designer and that I, that I just wanted to learn all about it that if given the opportunity, I just could accomplish great things. So that gave him the confidence that I could actually deliver a great job. And also one thing from my personal experience is to be one step ahead and try to uh, put, imagine scenarios like we did today. Mm -hmm. I, for my own side and here in Wise Lane, I start wondering what kind of things people might start asking me and I, took a, a step ahead and I brought some physical um, products that I already have designed. And it was actually something that it helped. Um, they asked me if some of my projects were printed or produced and I already had it in my backpack. So that was a high point. So yes, um, try to be uh, imagine what kind of scenarios you could be in and try to be ahead of that. Yeah, and you know, this digital era is super helpful because you can share your work wherever you're at. So be very conscious of that. If you're designing to build a website or are trying to build your portfolio in a non web -C way, like I would just suggest otherwise. Okay, so that will be all the questions. Thank you, Victor, for asking again. We hope it will be helpful, helpful for you. Yeah. And if you want to share us your um, elevator pitch for us to check on and give you feedback and all of you uh, people who are <laughs> taking the, this class, go on. We are really interested on you. And yes, uh, stay tuned for next week. Uh, you'll be hearing a, a lot about Javier Umaran, who is a wonderful UX designer. And Daniela Contreras, our talent ambassador, they'll be talking to you about choosing projects. So stay tuned. It will get very interesting. And bring up your questions. Um, Javi really likes, and uh, he's great at answering them. <laughs> yeah, Javi's great. And, you know, stay one step ahead and start thinking about the projects that you've worked on. So we hope uh, this session will be useful for you. And we have here a link for you to give us feedback. Uh, if we are, we love feedback. If there is something that we could improve on, we can hear it. If you if if you like something, we can hear it too. Yeah. <laughs> so like, don't be shy. If we've done a great job, like we would like to know that. And remember that this is the way that we will know if you attended the session and you need to attend to all sessions to get the Academy certificate. So please feel it. Well, thank you. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day.